Welcome to the program, the head coach of the BYU Cougars, who, according to ESPN yesterday, was listed as the fifth toughest college football coach in the country. Four was Kyle Whittingham, three was Ed Orgeron, two, Mario Cristobal, one, Pat Fitzgerald. So, Kalani, first off, welcome to the program. And second, do you think you could win an arm wrestling contest against Kyle Whittingham? I can beat all those guys in arm wrestling contests. <laughs> <laughs> Cristobal looks like it. he works out a lot. Yeah, they're older than I am, I think, but I don't know. It, it, uh, we'll have to settle it on on the. Uh, remember that movie, Over the Top? Maybe we can. Oh, oh yeah, of course. Love that movie. Classic. Yeah, I'll flip the hat around. And- oh yeah. <laughs> 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 Got to hold the wrist, you know, at the last second. Then boom. Yeah, I love that you just brought that uh, movie up. That's great. Hey, what do you think it I means? I had no idea they. I had no idea they they did such a thing. I mean, I, I think. It, that's a sign that we need to get back to football because <laughs> who knows what other list they'll come up with. <laughs> hey, trust us. There's just, always a just, list, Kalani, we can find. There's something. We just put out a list of the uh, you know top 10 most important players going into camp and whatnot. But let's start with this. So players are reporting today. The season starts tomorrow. How differently do you feel about the whole situation given what happened last year versus this year, which still isn't fully regular? There's still some nuance to this being in the pandemic, but boy, is it better. Yeah, I think I think the key is that we know who our first opponent is for sure, and we know where we're going to be. And um, I think we, you know the fact that we have a schedule in place and we can scout our guys. We the, all the work that we've done during the summer is going to pay off. But uh, I think focusing in on Arizona and uh, trying to get our install and all that stuff, it gives us a little bit more a feel of normalcy. Normalcy, and so uh, you know we're just hoping to have. Uh, you know, similar results and try to perform at our best and see what happens uh, with our offense, defense, and special teams. But really looking forward to uh, just starting uh, fall camp in, in as much normal circumstances compared to last year. What is this time of year like for you as the head coach? You know, I have the off season and now it really is time to get back to work. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's for me, I, I'm just, you know, it's an honor for me to be here and it's an honor for me to be involved with this program and with these young men and with the fans. So I, I'm more than anything, um, I'm really uh, thankful to be here and looking forward, uh, especially this year, to, to seeing the fans and uh, performing for them and, and, and getting uh, an opportunity to play in front of a, a packed house. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. But I think we could. there's a lot of things that we've done and the last year and, and things that we've done since the off season began to, to put some really cool things in place with some really uh, good talent. And uh, just more than anything, just uh, glad that football season is back again. Every year, obviously, is going to have its own feel. What's the feeling? What's the vibe with this team heading into fall camp right now? Yeah, I think there's a lot of excitement just going into the season. And uh, we have some new faces. Obviously, we have some competition uh, going on in, in, in a lot of different positions. And so um, I, I feel like, uh, for the most part, the foundation is set. Uh, right now, we just have to get back to competing and seeing who wins the starting spots. I think uh, the, the key of trying to get our guys as uh, physical and, and as aggressive as possible, but uh, at the same time, trying to uh, build team chemistry and keep uh, having our culture thrive is going to be really important in the next month. And I'm really looking forward to it. our players uh, implementing all of their ideas and then collaborating with them and then leading uh, this team in, into, uh, into that game against Arizona. Last year, you've mentioned that you were very proud of the fact that you were able to get a lot of guys playing time in games. Luckily, when you have a big lead, you can get some of the backups in, right? Um, what, what kind of impact do you feel like those backups will have in spots where, hey, maybe they're starters now? Well, we saw a lot of those young men play for the first time in, in, in quality reps, and that's hard to simulate game game type of reps uh, in a practice. And so whenever we had an opportunity to get those guys on the field, it was important. A lot of them made mistakes last year, and we saw them grow and get better throughout the process of the season and playing for the first time compared to playing in, in the bowl game against UCF, saw a lot of improvement. And... And the unfortunate part about COVID is that we we didn't have everybody available to play with uh, and didn't even have all our coaches for all our games. But the the other side of that is that a lot of these young men got opportunities to play uh, valuable reps. And um, 
and we saw that you know they, they could we could replace coaches and replace uh, players uh, with what we have right now. So going into the season, I think we're going to have to lean on the experience a lot, but also uh, the excitement of new guys coming along. I mean, we saw guys like Dax Milne and, and Zach Wilson take a huge step forward, and hopefully we can see that uh, form in, in the next couple weeks. You just mentioned, you know, a lot of different position battles. Certainly fans are going to gravitate towards the quarterback position, fans and media. Let's be perfectly honest about that. Uh, but what are the other position battles that really have your attention heading into this camp? Well, the, it's not really the other position battles. It's, it's uh, who's available to play. I, I think we have a good number of players that, that can battle. I mean, the starting spots just to see who, who gets uh, uh, snap number one. But from there on out, we're, we're, we feel like we need to have more than 11 starters on offense and more than 11 on defense. We have to be able to rely on different personnel sets. And so it would be good to have as many as possible. I would love to have a team full of 110 possible starters, you know, and, and uh, right now in camp going with 110 personnel or group of uh, people, uh, we need to try to get as many of those as possible. And obviously the, the best will be the guys that take the first snap, but to have an opportunity to use so many different people and create depth, that's going to be really key for us. Um, we're going to, you know, obviously we're going to have to put our guys through some uh, physical play during the next month to get us ready for the game. But, there's a lot of guys that I think we we know we can count on. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of um, having those guys battle it out and playing the best ones. We're talking with Kalani Stake, head coach of the BYU football team here on BYU Sports Nation. Certainly internally, Kalani, you could name a starter and keep that hidden and uh, go with that and then roll out whoever you want, right, on the game day versus Arizona. Do you have a plan of, of okay, if we know the guy, are we saying it out loud or not? Do you want to keep that close to the vest? And is there any timeline associated with at least internally identifying who this person could be? I don't think I can um, really forecast how that's going to work right now. Uh, I know that we're able to, to let this thing go out to a certain point, but at some time, the team, the players, uh, they all need to know, even including the fans, they need to know who's going to be the guy uh, taking the first snap. And so... Um, I don't know how quickly that's going to that's going to come out, but um, as soon as, as someone has separated themselves and, and pretty much earned that spot, then we'll, we'll name it. I think that's that's the right thing to do. But uh, if, it, if it goes a little bit longer, then, then so be it. We have to just keep competing. And um, I know we have to name a starter before the game, but I don't know when and how that's going to that's going to take place in the next uh, next couple weeks. I, I think. Right now, we're, we're kind of just open to whatever happens. And really, uh, I'm, I'm okay if someone earns it right away. I'm okay naming it as early as possible. And I'm, I'm okay making sure that we uh, do it the right way and that they earn it, even if it takes up to the last week. And so uh, in terms of the fans need to know, you, you're you okay saying that publicly pre-game day? Yeah, I think, I mean, people will start to know already. I, I don't know if it's, um, I'm not really interested in trying to keep things secret i'm just uh i i believe that eventually the team will see it and i think um the timing if it's right makes sense and i don't know if it, it gets you any advantage to to say that it's not going to be anyone until you know i i just think of the old days of where people thought that was an advantage i don't know how much of an advantage it really is uh i, I want our quarterback feeling confident going into the season and feeling confident when they earned the, the starting spot that um, that once we knew that it was done. The first game is obviously against Arizona. It's a team that you've played in the past. However, they're going to they're gonna be different. They have a new head coach, so obviously philosophies are going to change. Things are going to change. So how do you prepare for an Arizona team? Or, or I guess, yeah, how, how are you handling that, not necessarily knowing everything that you're going to see in week one? Yeah, that, that's that's the the difficult part is we don't know exactly what they're going to try to do on offense, defense, and special teams, and so we kind of have to be ready for a lot of different things. And then the fortunate part, um, you know, we have a lot of time to to kind of think of some things that, that we're going to see and 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 maybe predict. But uh, when it comes down to it, they they have the upper hand in the fact that we don't have a lot of film on 
on on them and their personnel. Well, what we do had know is what the coaches have done in other places and um, their identity and what we think they try to do, you know, their philosophy on things. But until we get to the game, we really won't know anything. And so right now we're we're we just got to prepare our guys to be ready for all of it. And then even for some things that, that we know they may do that we, we haven't seen before, but for the most part, it's just got to be ready for whatever comes our way. And I think our guys are, are interested and excited to learn as much as they can. And we'll see what, what Arizona brings to the table. But I, I know they have a lot of talent. They have a really good coaching staff and there's a lot of excitement going into this game. And so we're going to focus on us being our best. And I think I feel really comfortable with our chances if we can get that done. Kalani, there was so much good that happened in 2020 with this group, so much confidence for the program. And, uh, you know, nationally people noticed what BYU did, and it was respected. And Zach Wilson, number two pick, and Brady Christensen, high draft pick as well, and all these guys. What connective tissue is there from last season to this season with some of the returners, but also a lot of new guys? I think the key is the foundation has been set in the program. We, we've done it for a while and uh, developed this culture. It took some time to, to get um, really in a position where I think a lot of people can thrive. And, and we've learned a lot, a lot of things along the way. And so I feel really good about the foundation. It's just a matter of who's going to be the quarterback and who's going to be the, the, the guys playing on the field. Um, I feel good about the system. I feel good about the coaches in place. And... Um, you know, we'll, we'll see who, who the guys are that started emerging from camp. I, that's what it's going to come down to. But I feel like, for the most part, um, we we know who we are. We know our, our our identity on on all three phases, and we're going to keep building on that and and see what these new um, this new talent brings to the table, and see how we can implement what they bring um, along with what we have. And then we have to be open to to play our best guys and, and see what we can do scheme wise to get our best situation on offense, defense, and special teams. And that we're open for all that. I, I feel comfortable with the coaches and I feel comfortable with, with our, our system in place right now. And let's finish with this. Uh, certainly you're the head coach of the team and this is probably a holistic question, but I still want to get your opinion on it. Obviously Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC is shaking things up. There's a lot of conversation nationally. BYU in a power five league would be a, or a power league would be a great thing. Are you hoping for more chaos to create more need to, have BYU invited into a power league at some point? I'm not even worried about that. And, and um, I don't, our team is not focused on that. That's a Tom Homo question. And so for us, we'll be focused on Arizona. We'll be focused on being the best we can and uh, stuff that we can control, which is how we perform on September 4th against Arizona in Vegas. That's what we're going to focus on. Uh, we have guys right now that are just focused on trying to win starting spots and trying to earn playing time. Uh, last thing we need them to worry about is, is what's going to happen with con conference stuff and all that. Maybe we'll just say winner gets a bid to the Pac-12 from the Arizona game. That would be funny. <laughs> Kalani, we appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Kalani, we appreciate the time. Uh, we're one month away from the BYU-Arizona game. That's going to fly by, and, and soon we'll be kicking off and playing football again. We're stoked. I'm excited. Thanks, guys. Go Cougs. Thanks, Kalani. Go Cougs, indeed. That's Kalani Sataki, the head coach of the BYU Cougars.